the shift, which is our flagship expression. And we trust that God's word, which would come to, which, which, which would come to you today, would bring you into experiential freedom, experiential liberty. Because God's word is designed to bring the saints into absolute liberation. The Bible tells us, speaking, it says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you. word is coming to us from our matriarch and our apostle, our founding apostle, Apostle Obi Bax Ari tonight, and our lives will greatly, our lives will never remain the same. We'll be greatly blessed, we'll be greatly inspired, we'll be greatly motivated for excellence and for impact, we'll be greatly energized to live in accordance to God's will for our lives in this present time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so I want to ask that if you're joining us, please share the video, like the video, set up watch parties so that we could increase the viewership of today's program and today's broadcast. God is coming to us in a special and dynamic way today. We can't afford to just be the only person um, um, benefiting from this experience. Hallelujah. We'll start with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful and we thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for the gift of access. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity and privilege to partake of your nature and to fellowship in your presence. Today, O oh God, as we come in contact with your word, we ask that you give us an unusual experience, <coughs> a new experience altogether in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that tonight you help us, O oh God, to understand and comprehend your word clearly and give us the grace to apply dutifully. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, I want to appeal to as many who have hooked up to this live broadcast. Please help us set up watch parties, like the video, share the video with your network so that many individuals will be blessed by what God is set to do in their lives tonight. Um, I'm very sure that um, you have been a part of our programs the Mark Sheet programs on Mondays and the Extravagant Worship programs on Thursdays. And we can attest to the fact that God has always been gracious. The presence of God has always been among us and ever and it is ever with us. Please do so to like the videos and share the videos as we have God's word come to us again. And so taking us further tonight with Jesus' joy, let us receive the voice of information. Hallelujah. My soul says yes, says yes, says yes. My soul says yes to worship you from everlasting to everlasting because you alone are worthy of my worship 
my soul will worship you. He says yes to your worship, oh God, oh yes. All the days of my life, for who you are, I will worship you. I will exalt you. I will enthrone you, oh Jesus. My soul says yes to the things you say in my life. I gladly admit, oh Jesus, my soul says yes, says yes, says yes, my soul says yes to you. Lift your voice and worship. My soul says yes, says yes. My soul says yes to your will. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. Yes to the things you say. Yes. Says yes. My soul says yes to says yes. Whatever you think you say, I say yes, Jesus. My soul says yes to your will, oh, Holy Spirit. I say yes to the things you say, Spirit of the living God. My soul says yes, says yes, says yes, says yes. My soul says yes to My soul says yes to your will. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. Says yes. Says yes. My soul says yes. Because you were too 
from on high. His name is Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer. The reason why we are here is because he came to restore. He came to deliver. He came to set nations free. He came to set families free. He came to set individuals free. He came to set lands free. He came to set government free. So in every respect, our service unto God and unto the nations, unto humanity, unto you watching and those of us here is to enforce, is to bring to us the good news, which is the gospel. From Nehemiah Apostolic Resource Center, we are on the mission, the mission to repair broken down worlds. We are calling on all Nehemiahs to arise. So, Today's shift, the senior apostle Overnack, Apostle Obi Pashari is coming to shift our mind, to shift the nation. And to make us know what we ought to do in such a time as this. In the history of humanity, there have been crises. This is not the first time we are faced with situation that we are faced with today globally. The 
COVID-19 pandemic, economic crisis, political crisis, wars, disaster, natural disaster, confusion in families. But today, like the scripture says in Acts 20 and verse 32, God has equipped his servant to bring us the mind of God for such a time as this. And what do we have in the Acts of Apostles, chapter 20, verse 32? It reads, I am reading from the GNT version. And now I commend you to the care of God and to the message of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you the blessings God has for all his people. I have not wanted anyone silver or gold or clothing. So what we are talking about, we are not demanding anything else, but that you, because you are in your nation, the nation where you are listening, watching, for those of us in Nigeria, God has blessings for the nation and for us individually, for every family, for every organization. We are in crisis. We are in a state of emergency. What will God have us do? And in a situation like this, it reminds me of the story in the Bible when the prophet came and told the people that they've laid siege. They were cut out from every activity beyond the boundaries of their nation. The wars of their friends kept them in because the enemy was out. And their hunger was much. This was the very time that two women had issues. They killed the first woman's baby and ate. It was that terrible. And when it was the turn of the second woman's baby to be killed and be eaten, she said no. And they took the case to the king. So it was that bad. And the prophet came and said, by this time tomorrow, the bag of rice, the bag of cement, the dollar that is going for 500 and something, somebody, I said um, over the weekend, I don't even know the current rate of the dollar. So, um, Dr. Pass said to me, you are still asking for the current rate of the dollar. It has gone beyond the ceiling. There is no need to ask for the rate. And this is where we find ourselves. But the word is coming to teach you what you ought to do for such a time as this. For the nation to know what they ought to do. I am speaking to you from Nehemiah Center in Nigeria. Ours is a peculiar case. Even though globally we are challenged, ours is still peculiar. But the word coming tonight, and by the way, Apostle is going to be on with us by 7 p.m. West African time. Please invite your friends. Invite families. If you have the link already, share. Just share. The information are all there. The Zoom link. The, um, the, the, the meeting ID is there. The password is there. <clears throat> Just share because <clears throat> solutions are here with us. The service, the ministry of an apostle is to break ground for people to try. It's to trust people into their places, to trust the nation to come into alignment. And the topic we are considering tonight, overcoming national crisis, 
and collecting spoils of warfare. So the, the, the time that we are in, God is already telling us the way to go. And the senior apostle over Nehemiah, the senior apostle over Nehemiah Apostolic Resource Center, and the person of Apostle Obi Pasari, she is coming on tonight to bring us the mind of God for such a time as this. Glory be to God. So, the word of God will give us an inheritance. Will make us not to leave this place that we find ourselves. The pandemic, the wars, the crisis. God is going to show us a way how we'll come out of it better. To come out with the spoils of war. Get your writing materials. Get your tablets. Get your pen and paper to take note as instructions, as directives, specifics, direction will come to all of us tonight. If you have people in government, in your nation, connect them to be on. Solution is here. They are not going to pay for it. God has given freely and freely it will be served tonight. So please, get settled. Calm down wherever you are. Don't forget to invite others to be part of what God is bringing our way tonight. And God will surely bless you as you do. And once again, I call on the voice of reformation as they take us on before Apostle comes on in a few minutes. Hallelujah. So get settled down, invite friends, share, like on our Facebook page, Nak Abuja. The information is there screaming over your screen. You can share and God will surely bless you. Yes, please.
chosen by mercy to call me to arise to do that which God has told us to do to bring lands and nations into our lands. A pastor of pastors is an apostle. Pastor, I'm going to have to stop you. <laughs> I, I will have to stop you, nation. Pastor John. Can you hear me? Yes, Apostle, we can hear you. Yes, I know you're full of honor, but I want to stop um, us and then let's get into the uh, teaching. <laughs> Maybe you can share where the people are rambling. I want to okay. just say, people of God, I'll pray and we start to teach. We're in a new season, all right? We're in a time where our dependency on the Holy Spirit has to be really um, highlighted. And you know me, I'm, I'm very natural. <laughs> you know, um. So um, Pastor John and I, he's a great, where are you going, Pastor John? <laughs> so Pastor John, yeah. Apostle, we love let's you, well. we appreciate you. Love you too. So just, yeah, let's just kind of set, uh, let's get the people uh, excited. Let's just kind of interpret the season. Um, just a minute. Glory, it's a privilege to have you. Okay. Yeah, so, so uh, we've there. been, uh, Pastor John and I have been speaking at the back. I've been kind of saying no, 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 because as I want to just say that as we start, that we're in a decade of um, the Holy Spirit moving like we've never uh, known it or seen it. And, um, and I was pleading with him. I said, I don't want to be described in any kind of, you know, words that I can't fit into because we don't want to lose the Holy Spirit here. So I want to set that as um, maybe lay that as a foundation and um, set it as an uh, ordinance even, you know, uh, over, you know, the nations and all of that, because there's a lot we've attributed to leaders. We can do this and that and that. And the world is in crisis and we've seen that we've not even been able to do it. I don't even know if there is any nation called superpower or all of that anymore. So with that, I want to just thank this incredible man of God, um, Pastor John Ono. He's a man of honor. He's like Jabez. He's full of honor. And I want to thank you, Pastor John, for honoring me. And I just wanted people to just kind of relax. Sure, sure. And um, just to bring a bit of um, understanding of where we're at as a body of Christ. So we're careful, even the language we use, because then, you know, we either have people overextending or people um, 
um, overextending, as Apostle Paul would write about, you know, boundaries, spheres of influence, or we're not able to manage expectations. So thank you very much. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you on this line. We welcome you, the Spirit of God, you know, uh, the revealer of secrets. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, our teacher. And I ask that you will enable me, you know, um, at this time to bring the mind of God, you know, humbly to the people of God. I ask that you will bless everyone that is on this line. I ask, oh God, that you will give us listening ears. Spirit of the Lord, I decrease that you will increase. I ask that you increase, Holy Spirit. Uh, the greatest gift that you can give us this day is listening ears, attentive spirit, Father, and retentive memory that what we hear today becomes truth that we distill becomes truth that we can implement and execute wherever we are, that the kingdom of God can truly be advanced, that we can fulfill our end time role as believers, as members of God's household, that we can fulfill our mandate to disciple the nations, to preach the gospel to all creatures. So Father, I ask today, like I said, that you will help us, oh God, and that you will quicken our spirit, man, to come to a place of stillness, that we may know that you are God. But I ask that the gate of the wonders realm will be open to us right now, that each person at the sound of my voice, by faith, I bring us into that place where John the Revelator accessed, even, Father, perhaps a realm that is higher than that, as we're a new creation, that we can see through the door that is standing open in heaven. And that Lord, truly, we can hear and we can see, perceive what has never been heard, never been seen, incomprehensible, that by that, the nations can be rebuilt in Jesus' mighty name. Please hang in there. Don't go. Apostle is on just um, technical hitches. Um, Apostle is right on. We say sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. So I want to just talk to us about, I want to do what I call stewardship, prophetic stewardship, right? And I'm bringing this under the topic of overcoming national crisis and, you know, um, taking the spoils of warfare. So that's where we're at. So I want to steward uh, the prophecy uh, that, you know, God gave me. So sight, all right? and. Um, I want to um, say that uh, at the back of what Pastor John exhorted us with to understand that we are in a time of crisis. You don't need a prophet to tell you that the world is in a time of crisis, right? So the world is in a time of crisis, but there are a people, a people who have to remain functional, a people who have been given a mandate, you know, to, um, get the world, you know, um, at a, a place of peace at all times to bring, you know, sides, to bring what it takes 
I think NAC possibly needs to go off camera. Yeah, to bring um, sight, to bring understanding, to bring what it takes to keep the world stable. So the, uh, the, the uh, ecclesia have a responsibility, have work in, in to do. The ecclesia have been commissioned, you know, to, to, to do certain things. And it is um, clear from the word of God what our commission is. I always like to start with, um, start with um, the time, you know, what time is it? I think it's very important that in the, because as revelation is progressive, as you know, um, God is not static and we're not meant to be static. As we're a workforce and as people that have been called you know, um, that is ecclesia, that is the church, that is the kingdom, whatever you want to uh, um, describe us as at. I want to just even put theology aside. I want to just put even, you know, um, some of our uh, persuasions aside and the things that divide us and the things that we understand and how we exegize. Let's just put this to one side and let's just look at uh, these people called God's children, sons, ambassadors, uh, um, priests, kings, you know, and let's look at us in the context of church, ecclesia, whatever. But I want to say to us, believers in Christ Jesus. So if you are a believer in Christ Jesus, so you received him as uh, Lord and Savior, okay, a personal Lord and Savior, Messiah in your heart, you enlisted into his army, you, you, no matter the title, whatever you want to um, work with, there are some scriptures that are very important, you know, that you must lay the foundation of your life with. It is very important. It's very critical that we move from a place of understanding and we have to, to do this. We have to go back to what it really is all about. We have to go back to the foundation of our faith. We, go, we have to go back to a basic teaching. We have to go back to even restructuring as some natures, nations are asking. So for instance, 2 Timothy, you know, chapter two, verse four, you know, gives us a very, very important instructions. I believe that everything in life starts with instructions. So if you can help me note Proverbs 4.13 with this, all right, that the uh, Solomon the wise says you should take firm hold of instructions that you should not let her go for she is your life. That's uh, Proverbs 4.13. So let's just even note that, you know, take firm hold of instructions. Do not let her go for she is your life. So instructions are very important to anyone that is hoping to fulfill purpose. Anyone that God's called in, I mean, and you're called once you are a believer. So I want to talk to believers. All right. So you are a believer. And as long as you are a believer, you're under a mandate. And we're going to be looking at that. And often we must refresh even our computers. When things are frozen, what do we do? We refresh our screen so that the information we need comes back to us. So you have to understand, number one, that in a time of conflict, crisis, confusion, you return to instructions. Instructions are very important. So Proverbs 4.13 is going to be important to you. And number two, you have to figure out who is the instructor here because you can't be listening to everyone. And we know that our overall instructor is creator God, okay? And this takes us right back to Genesis in chapter one, verses 26 to 28 and several other scriptures. So I'm not even talking about who he is. And then if we're confused, even if we want to look at the nature of the instructor, we can just very simply go to Jeremiah 29, verses 23 to 24, you see. So this is how we develop our guidelines, our personal guidelines, so we do get you know, confused and we're not um, um, 
uh, tossed about by every wind of doctrine, as James says, we are not tossed about by every wind of doctrine because we have not bothered to do our homework. So we can no longer survive. You know, we must be people that thrive. We cannot be people that just survive. So we must be people that thrive. So going in that um, uh, um, kind of methodical thing, I mean, developing even your roadmap to successful living and victorious living, you got to be someone that is moved by instruction you have to remind yourself your mind yourself the psalmist says bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name so you have to command your soul to remember who your instructor is very very critical that you remember who your instructor is and your instructor is creator god your instructor is not the world system. And there Paul tells us, and I'll, I'll, I'll be reading that to you as well, because it's very important we get foundation. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Psalm 16 verse six, you know, points this out very, very clearly that this, uh, um, the, 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 our foundation let me just be, be, let me just make sure that it's not 11.3 here. So that, you know, our foundation must be right. If the foundation of understanding, okay, is destroyed, what can the righteous do? All right. So uh, I am an attorney by training. So which is a, a lawyer and I'm, my mind is trained to bring about what I'm the foundation of my argument. So what am I standing on to bring in a matter? So it's 11.3, so very important. You see, I could have just thrown that out. You have to be a Berean Christian. You have to write down the scriptures. You have to go and check. Maybe there's a mistake there and then you can search out a matter and that's the charge that Proverbs 25 verse two gives us. I'm laying a foundation of how we're gonna operate as kingdom agents, become people who can be part of resolving national crisis and become people who can take the spoils. So right now, before we even talk about principles of, you know, uh, uh, of overcoming national crisis, we are already taking the spoils. How are we taking the spoils? Because we are looking at the scriptures to make sure that we are in a line upon line, precept upon precept understanding. And in doing that, we are getting our mind processes to begin to process accurately. We are getting our mind thinking to begin to think uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 in accordance with the word of God, but systematically. So even in the way that we're going, in laying foundation, we are educating our minds, but beyond educating our minds, our mind is being restructured to develop roadmaps to where we're going. And we develop the roadmaps by the word of God, because it is with the word of God that we get breakthrough. We understand that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will endure forever. Grass will fall, you know, um, um, Grass will wither, okay? Grass will wither, flowers will fall, but his word will stand forever. So, and we know that God exalts his word above his name. So the word of God is very important. Jeremiah tells us that it is like a hammer that breaks rocks into pieces, all right? And the psalmist tells us that it's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. So the word of God is very important. So in, in, in putting a little uh, laying foundation here with the word of God, developing a checklist, you're not going to forget. So when you get up in the morning, you understand that if the foundation of understanding is destroyed and in present truth, what does that look like? If the foundation of your understanding is distorted, if it is fragmented, you cannot make a good argument that um, enables you to fulfill your mandate as one that is sent out there to uh, um, to disciple the nations. So to disciple, uh, uh, a disciple is an imitator of the master. So if you are already coming with distorted, fragmented, you know, our uh, knowledge and information, your argument, your position, your proposition, what you are saying can be challenged by those who have bothered to do the work. I was once in a taxi in London and it was being driven by a Muslim young man 
I mean, he knew the gospel more than the average Christian. He had the chapters, he had the verses because Jesus is in the, in the Quran. So he studied him, but he, he knows him as the prophet. But you and I know him as the Lord and master. And that's what he is. And that's who he will remain forever and ever. And that's who's coming back. So going back to laying foundation to overcoming national crisis, and gaining spoils of warfare. And I'm doing this in context of prophetic stewardship because these are no longer the days that prophets throw out words and then they catch a flight and they are off. You gotta come back like Elijah because we need to birth Elijah revolution, which is revolution of righteousness and justice upon the earth. You're gonna have to come back and guide us, all right? Seven levels of how we're gonna see what you prophesied come to pass, right? And you do not affirm yourself. Typically, prophets are never to affirm themselves, okay? Affirmation comes from the visible, evidential, I mean, you know, physical manifestation, you know, credible, uh, 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 whatever, manifestation of what's been spoken. Remember that it's not in the pro prophetic protocol for a prophet to affirm themselves. The Bible says the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet, right? So we've got to do things right. When the spirit of God inspires an office, the office speaks according to what that office was set uh, set up for. Let me say that again. When the spirit of God, Kalita, is speaking through an office, and when I say office, I mean function, right? The fivefold. The spirit of God, you know, uh, Jesus through the spirit of God, you know, speaking to through a function, uh, uh, an, an office, uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, okay? That gift manifests itself in what that office was uh, uh, created or given for, all right? Don't forget that Ephesians 4 offices uh, what Jesus worked with, his attributes, the attributes that he served in his incarnate, that he distributed in five dimensions and placed as gifts, all right? To build up the church, ecclesia, and these gifts he placed in man. So there are people that were created to be um, servants, servant leaders, to function in the fivefold, all right? So it's not about the title. When we think about the title, there is a demand for worship. But when we think about work, service, then there is a demand for accountability. You're going to expect me to make account for the word that I have given. So I'm here to make account for the word that I gave for the month of October, that it's a month of joyful rejoicing. And the spirit of God gave me the scripture, Second Chronicles chapter 20. And that's what we're going to be working with. Now also, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter two that the, the, the church is built on the foundation, no, sorry, the doctrine of uh, apostle and prophet Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. What does that mean? It means that the church is built on the inspired, inspired teaching, all right? The way that those two functions bring about revelation, right? That the church is, is built up by the inspired teaching, revelatory teaching, and the way it comes from those two, remember, you know, functions, functions. So the service, you know, gifts. So the way that they speak lays a foundation. So I'm challenging you this day that you have to lay a foundation for receiving what comes so that there is solidity. Because in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, the text that I am stewarding, all right? Stewarding, all right? So I'm coming to make an account for the word that I gave like Elijah, right? for the month of October. So we see how, how does it look? We have many more days to still fulfill what God is saying, all right? So it says, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. So that is the main thing. That's my motivation today in uh, accepting the invitation to speak on that is that you are established, right? You are established, you know, in what God is saying. So your mind is settled. There is a settlement in your spirit and you can transform 
um, uh, you can translate information. You, you can get strategies, a war plan for application, personal, national. This is where I'm going. And the thing about the apostle prophet, you know, gift is that it can lay foundation for a session and that's it. But it's very important because we see from uh, Psalm 11, 3, that if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous, uh, um, what can the righteous do? So if there is no place to stand to bring, remember what foundations give us. Foundations give us primarily uh, a standing ground. In law, it's called a local standard. So foundations give us a local standard, give us, you know, the authority, because we're coming in a time where the apostle prophet gave the, plus the teacher, the threefold gifts will begin to bring truth in such a way that lawlessness will be distilled, lawlessness will be destroyed in the body of Christ, that what we have right now, like everybody having an opinion, everyone having uh, what to say, and people being tossed uh, here and there by every wind of um, doctrine because we have um, developed, you know, itchy ears that that's going to be of the uh, era of the past. Okay. So as the church want to join into her uh, apostolic eh? nature, can you mute, no, please? No, no, no. Can you mute, please? Um, um, as she comes in, uh, the church comes into her apostolic destiny. And what we're going to get is, you know, um, mm, what we're going to get is uh, Christians that are balanced and mature and able to take the kingdom of God wherever you are, especially in your work spaces. Okay. So um, remember what I said that we are going to come out of that um, existence of uh, people that are thrown that are um, uh, thrown here and there, tossed here and there by every wind of doctrine. Right, okay. So instructions are very important and um, important that we also know who's instructing us. So God instructs us, creator God, and um, we have to know his nature. So what we hear has to reflect his nature and he's given us, also leaders who instruct us and have given us those as in Ephesians chapter four, uh, verses 11, uh, verse 11, okay? So you can take it from 10. 10 tells you that these are gifts that Jesus worked with. 11 tells you those he dispensed it into, you know, uh, and, and then verse um, 12 makes you understand just where we're going on a journey to verse 16, which tells you there is a journey, a journey of uh, becoming Christ-like. Okay, a journey of Christ likeness, because it is with that nature, with that identity, that we are able to be effective in our great commission. And that great commission uh, is also um, uh, um, spoken of as the culture mandate, right? Culture mandate. So that's um, Genesis um, uh, 1 28 and uh, Matthew uh, 28, verse 19 tells you that Jesus came and he did not, he came to redeem us back to God and the responsibility to be an expression or to express the dominion mandate, not to dominate, okay? Dominion mandate was not taken away. If anything, Jesus reinstated, you know, that uh, um, mandate, the dominion mandate, he reinstated it and the kingdom mandate. So we are still people on assignment. And as people that are on assignment, there are still people that have been given, you know, the responsibility to equip us for the work of the assignment so that we don't recreate, we don't create lawlessness and we don't recreate the, the Eden, you know, um, uh, 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 Eden situation of Adam and Eve, that we are a people that understand clearly our assignment and as people being equipped for the work of the ministry, that we can, you know, um, give ourselves to that equipping, you know, and that in that in uh, that equipping, that we can be effective workmen. So here, Second Timothy makes us understand very clearly we're in a time of war, in a time of crisis, and he tells us in um, um, chapter two, verse four, that no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of life of this life. 
that he may displease so he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier then so let me read that again he says no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with uh, the affairs of this life so don't entangle yourself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. So this is a call to live the over and above life, okay? So the believer, you that is being uh, addressed today, that is hearing me, you're called to live the over and above life, right? The over and above life is the supernatural life, is the supernatural life. You cannot live like those, you know, that you are called to disciple, no. You know, you have to have you know, more light, okay? So it says your light must shine before men, okay? So what you are, who you are, the attributes of Christ that you carry has to find expression wherever you are. So you must live ethical life so you become that person that people can listen to, okay? So your light has to share, shine before men. It's ethical living, it's values, you know, um, centered living, and of course, it's biblical values, not the value of Babylon. So can you see where we're going with this? That it is important that we develop those checklists. So my number three has to be the kind of life that I live, okay? So there is warfare. So I must not be surprised, but what is happening? There's conflicts, okay? So yeah, there's crisis. That's part of life. But the over and above life is not you know, um, con consumed with all of that because the over and above life of the believer makes us understand that we still have an assignment and we're still going to have to fulfill that assignment. And we are at this point, you know, going to fulfill it as sons. So the, the whole picture of sonship begins to, uh, um, begins to open to us so that we understand why we've got to be people that on that hear a message that talks about overcoming national crisis all right because nations are in crisis okay nations are in crisis and who are the deliverers of those nations so there is a need for deliverers to to rise up so the identity you work with in a season is very important and in a time. The identity in a season, okay, is very important because revelation is progressive and we're going from glory to glory. So every season, every time, just help me if you're a good scribe to put the notes up there and help share so people understand. So every season demands of us an, you know, an identity or an expression of Christ's identity, all right? So if we don't understand that, we may be coming as children because there's a lot of juxtaposing. So we may be coming as children, but we are being called at this time. When we're talking nations, we have to be talking about sons. We have to be talking about sonship. We have to be talking about inheritance. We have to be talking about inheritance laws, isn't it so? Okay, we have to be talking about ownership, you know? And how do you talk to about ownership without understanding of estate matters? So now, if you were God, will you not boost the brain? Let me be very simplistic here. Will you boost the brains of your people to begin to understand, to understand these? And then let me use another word that will help you to understand these concepts that the world, the secular world has already worked. But these are the concepts that your church Okay, so let, let me use the word concept. So these are concepts that the church has not examined because we have been in buildings. We're too religious. We're too good to look at these concepts. We're too good to look at wealth. We're too good to examine wealth, all right? Because we're ashamed, some of us, you know, to even begin to, you know, become wealthy. But we can read the books. We can act on roots. But I'm here to change that paradigm, all right? So I'm saying to you that as a believer, there are things that you have to understand that you have been called, you know, enlisted in an army. So you have to begin to uh, develop number five military. And I'm going to come back to, um, to number three, four, and five, right? So number three, uh, I said it is a believer. I'm looking at the believer who has to live the over and above life. So it's the over and above life right now, which is the supernatural life. And number four is you can't do that unless you understand, you know, status 
you know, sonship. Because revelation being progressive, there is an identity for every season. And I said, part of the identity, what you have to understand, the mindset, the mentality, okay, that you have to operate in the season, mentality, mindset is that of a military, a soldier, okay? Because Kalita Mahanda Baba, you are advancing in the army of God to take back territories, possess lands, you know, uh, possess knowledge, possess, uh, you know, whatever it is has been taken from the ecclesia that we're not in the 0.5%, you know, of population making decision for, for instance, in the case of Nigeria, 200 million people. Or why, for instance, in Nigeria, you believe that it is a lot of the church to always produce, you know, the vice president and never the president. So these are the mindsets that have to be, you know, broken and destroyed as we discuss. So remember, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier, okay? Because the super grace preachers make you think that Jesus did it all at the cross and you're not to do anything. You're just to lay in bed and just have coffee like myself. But no, he did it all that you may become an executor of that verdict, okay? okay? So you become a, bail a bailiff and an executor. You become someone that executes that judgment. How do you do that? You leave the benefit of the cross. You live it in such a way that you destroy the works of the enemy. So faulty thinking of the world system that you are the tail and not the head. So this is how it is. And I'm gonna be taking you to scripture that helps you remember you ha have to develop a military mindset. But you see, this is not, it's, it's an interesting mindset. It's a mindset of one that's already victorious before they went to war, okay? They're victorious before they went to war. They never even fought, okay? You are more than a conqueror and you never fought a war, okay? You are victorious. You never even fought, fought a war. I, I, amazing, you know? He has given you the power to make wealth. What does that look like? It's all in the mind cavity, okay? So the world has been enjoying this and now it's a time for things to flip over. The real owners, the real owners, the real stakeholders, the people that have been given, you know, what it takes to manage the world and to bring her, the world into a place of discipline that it aligns with the will of God and starts to look for God, like heaven, those people have emerged are emerging and whatever level you are at, I have uh, some um, word for you from the Father's throne that will help you right after this broadcast to begin to manifest. Please give me time to, and give me time to just make a stewardship of this incredible word that we are in a month of joyful rejoicing because we have been given each what it takes to overcome national crisis, all right? Not just on a personal level where we duck and dive, no, but offensive warfare where we take the truth out there, we're vocal about the truth. We understand that we are, you are the media mountain. You are the media mountain, right? There's not a day where you're gonna have a press conference with CNN, CNBC, NTA, BBC, all of them, Al Jazeera, in one room and we say, yeah, we're taking the mountain, right? You are, I wanna put it out there and go test it. We are the media mountain. We are of the mountain of the Lord's house that is being elevated and established above every other mountain. So our understanding of world affairs and issues is changing. God is giving inspired Kelecita information, knowledge to the believer. This is being aired where unbelievers will hear. That's fantastic. But there are now things that you don't share out there in the open space. You have to understand the value that you carry. You do not arm your enemy. So there's gonna come a wisdom after you've heard me. You will know what to share out there and what to share in there and what to share in between. Hallelujah. Somebody's got to say hallelujah. That's great going on there. So remember, 
Don't let any super grace message make you go to sleep. You are enlisted. Here it is in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. It's in the word of God, right? Jesus Christ, Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 to 15. You can read it. The Bible is filled with military language. We are called to a war, but it is a war that's already been won, all right? Hence, Paul said to his spiritual son, um, uh, Timothy, that with prophecies made previously concerning you, wage the good warfare. We've been called to the good warfare because the word of God is complete. That is the prophecy. That's not what I'm teaching here. The word of God is complete. It is, it is, it is, it is relevant to any and every situation you can ever face. Truth weapons, whatever you need to get you out is in the word of God. Like I said, it is fundamental that you understand the times and that you understand the identity. You understand the war that we're up against, okay? And then the identity. So Solomon the wise, I hope someone after this is gonna go into some deep uh, um, uh, Bible study uh, when you understand this you know, systemic way and systematic way of uh, systematic, not systemic, systematic way of uh, causing your mind to bless the Lord. Causing your mind to bless the Lord is making your mind to think right, to think like God, to think like a king. And so your mind thinking like that, it thinks in alignment, okay? One, like chronological. So in that way, your thinking is not scattered. It's not scattered at all. It is, it is sharp you know it, 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 it you're able to channel your thoughts to what you're up against so solomon the wise made it clear that to everything there is a season a time for every purpose under heaven a time to be born a time to die a time of war a time of peace so when you are fighting a war in a time of peace you're fighting what i call otw otw is out of time war. So you don't want to be fighting when you should be in rest, all right? So the Bible tells you also, this is very important, like I said, in the chronology of what I'm, I'm developing for you here, and I'm developing for you a mind mapping, you know, um, a mind mapping uh, uh, tool, really. Mind mapping is not a secular concept. The God created the mind. So this is how the mind of God operates and the mind of God is the mind of king, kingship, is the mind of a ruler. So I'm making, remember, stewardship of the word of from Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, which I believe is where we're at. And I'm, I'm almost rounding off, but I, I needed to give you the scriptures and I needed to give you um, kind of the six um, steps. And I don't like to stop at six. Six is a number of man, you know, after the purposes of man. So my seventh one will be, what time is it? And I'm gonna just tie this up and you, I think you're gonna be excited. And um, and if you want to uh, hear more of it, then you can tell Pastor John and he probably will have me back. All right, so they're important. You don't wanna be fighting out of time war because verse 11 of, of, of uh, Ecclesiastes chapter three tells you that God, not you, makes all things beautiful in its time. Says he's planted eternity, all right? He planted eternity in our hearts, but we don't know the beginning from the end. But when we're intimate with him, working, walking in sync with the Holy Spirit, we certainly we understand God's time, his calendar, and then we can function in the place of peace. Remember, Paul said to his son, uh, Timothy, he said, with prophecies made previously concerning you, wage the good warfare. Because the word of God is complete. You know, when, when he says, you know, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, in 2 um, Corinthians uh, 4, 7, uh, having this vessel, uh, this treasure in earthen vessels, that uh, we have the complete kalabosikite scripture in earthen vessels, in the believers they carry it. John the Revelator was asked not to weep. He thought there was no hope. He thought there was, you know, no way out because he didn't know who was worthy, who, who, you know, who was worthy, okay, to, 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 to open the scroll and to lose its seals, okay? He said, no one in heaven or, or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. This is from Revelation chapter five. So you must not think that there are no solutions to national issues. There are no solutions to national crisis. 
or global crisis or your personal crisis, I'm here to tell you that you carry the solutions if you're a believer listening to me. If you're not a believer listening to me, I am inviting you into this communion and into this fellowship and into this community of believers. All you have to do is decide today to be translated from the kingdom of darkness, which is where sin abides, mind is locked, there is rebellion, into the kingdom of his son and of his love. And that is by repenting of your sins, giving up the sin life and you know, calling, asking the, the Jesus to come into your heart as your personal Lord and savior. And you can be like any one of us listening or speaking, the spirit of God can inhabit you and through you bring about the mind of Christ to others in darkness. So you become immediately a workman. You come into the workforce of God and that is the primary purpose of our existence. And that's what I've been trying to paint to us as a picture that I'm also hoping to penetrate, penetrate into our hearts as a truth that we are people called on a commission. We're servants, whether we're the equippers who equip those that will go because we go by equipping or we are the equipped that we have come into a time where we have to understand the time, the season, God's calendar, okay? And what he's speaking into the calendar, his voice, okay? And the identity to execute with, to execute with, okay? You cannot go as an Air Force uh, man. You cannot go as a, a, a Navy, a, a Navy uh, person into the battlefield, ground uh, level battlefield, no. You're meant to be on a ship and you're meant to be on the sea. You see how it works. So John the Revelator was weeping. I'm saying weep not. He thought there was nobody found worthy on the earth, okay, in heaven on the earth or under the earth to open the scroll or to look at it. And so he wept, okay? Uh -huh. uh, but one of the elders said to me, he said, you know, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. And he said, and I look and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne and work began. The seventh seal here, all right, is really interesting. And it is important that you, you, you just begin to even get excited here. Okay, so when it was opened, let me tell you, it's really interesting, okay? And when it was open, here's what, and this is something you have to note, you know, where we're at right now and why I'm here to exhort you. So this is the se seven trumpet, okay? Sorry. So I'm talking about the trumpets now, okay? The seven trumpet, yeah, okay? So we move from the, uh, the, we move from the seals to the trumpet, okay? And you're a trumpet. This is the decade of the voice you're expected to be a trumpet. You're expected to translate the contents of the scroll. It's not hidden. The seals have been broken. Jesus was found worthy, okay? So he knows the beginning to the end. He has it all. When he was going back to the father, having reconciled us to the father, he said to the disciples, I send you the promise of the father. He said, tarry in the city of Jerusalem until Jude for, uh, with power from a heart. He made them understand the work of the promise of the Father. And one of the distinctions is as a teacher, illuminator. And the promise of the Father dwells inside of the believer. This is why the believer is so important. We talk about cryptocurrency. We talk about all these currencies. The currency of the believer has not been understood. The believer is a mystery. You are a mystery. You are a mystery. You got to understand that. When you understand that, you're God's wisdom hidden in mystery. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter your gender. It doesn't matter your race. It doesn't matter your size. 
whoever you were created to be, you have to come to terms with, okay? This is a time of wholeness and total healing because this is the decade that you must become. So it's very important. And this is why I'm taking time to lay this foundation. I may even be out of your face before I get into a core message where I'm gonna try to tie it down. So maybe I'm going too fast because I'm really excited by what the spirit of God is showing. So Jesus did not leave a gap. He made them understand that as he goes, he was going to send a force upon the earth, but the force will not just be over the earth. The force will also dwell inside of them and through them begin to do exploits, all right? Through them, bring them to the fullness of who they are as sons, because <laughs> Romans 8, 14 tells us that the sons are those that are led by his spirit. As many as are led by his spirit, these are the sons of God. I just kind of hear the spirit of God say here, someone needs to be sharing this right now. You know, someone needs to jump out of, you know, Zoom and on Facebook, begin to share it. There are people whose life are literally, lives are literally, the tra trajectory of their lives will literally change. God is, I see the spirit of God moving across the earth, anointing deliverers even this evening, because I, I am here speaking to you as a miracle okay i was in an accident a week ago fractured nose it hurts yes laceration in the lips it hurts yes forehead bruise it hurts yes you know and all of that but here i am i'm sitting here by the mercy of god and i'm i'm bringing truth it could be that all that happened so tonight will not be but it is and that's what we've got to focus on so it's very important when the seventh trumpet uh, was sounded, this is where you are. Then the seventh trumpet sounded, Revelation 11, 5, okay? I told you that my last thing is what time is it? So it's the time of the seventh uh, trumpet, right? Okay, it's your time. It's uh, Hebraic year 5, uh, uh, 5782. It's a decade of the mouth that we're in, and it's the year of the house. Okay, so it's very important we understand this thing so we don't stress ourselves in, in what we're not supposed to be stressing ourselves, okay? He's, we, we contact his glory from glory to glory. So we don't want to be talking about yesterday's glory, the glory of last decade. We thank God for all of that. Hey, guy made us understand that glory is progressive. So the glory of this present house shall be greater than that of the former. Hey, guy, chapter two, uh, verses um. Uh, uh, a four to nine, very interesting. You can look at that. So the, the, then the seventh angel sounded and there was there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. So let me now tie this all up. So the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, okay? Yeah. That they be, you know, and that's through you. And he shall reign forever and ever. He's going to reign through you. He's already reigning through you. You just need to understand. So the, the what the enemy is doing is bringing his lies so that you don't understand how important that you are, that you are the one that is called to manifest, okay, the rulership, the reign, the victory report of the cross. So that's a status, that's an identity, okay? So this is why you've got to be in the study of the word. The world is right now in conflict and crisis. It can only be repaired by the word of God because it was created by the word of God. And you can reference Hebrews 11 uh, verse three there. So 2 Timothy 2.15 tells you that, um, let me read that for you, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, approved to God. Remember, remember what number is that? Number two, you have to know your instructor, okay? Primary instructor God, right? Number one, instruction is important. He says, study to show yourself, be you diligent to present yourself, the version says study, approved to God, a worker, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Remember I said to you, that we, you have a commission to go and disciple the nations. But if your knowledge is fragmented, if your knowledge is weak, if your knowledge is abridged, if your knowledge, oh my God, if your knowledge is, is, <laughs> is, is scattered, they will overpower you. I told you about the Muslim taxi driver, young guy who knew the gospels like never before. Jesus himself subjected himself to this rule. Here's what he said in John 9. He said, 
I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. I want to make you understand that we're shift. I don't think, I don't want to say we're shifting from, from Kilabasoko to church age to kingdom age. I believe we've shifted already. It just depends on where you are and you can receive speed, acceleration to come to where you ought to be, right? So, you know, you have to understand that when we talk about the kingdom of God, this is attributes that are inside of you because Jesus said this to the disciples. He brought them understanding and definition, you know, brought them out of confusion. They were asking him, you know, they're asking him, you know, when's the kingdom going to come? And Jesus said to them, you know, it made them understand so the kingdom of God is inside of you. The kingdom of God is inside of you. It's not an external thing. It is inside of you. In Luke 16, 6, I'm sorry, I'm a lover of the word. Like I said, I'm a lawyer by training and we, uh, my mind is uh, structured to, to give me the evidential you know what I mean? The word of God is evidence. It's closed. It's complete. Um, and so I'm not, I'm not giving to fables. I want to know what you're standing on and I'm follow. I'm a follow. Okay. So the, the word of God, you know, makes us understand that the kingdom of God, those that must follow it must press in. So Luke 16, 16 says the law and the prophets were until John. Since that that time, the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing into it. I'm challenging you to press into it as I begin to give you the principles that I'm here to give you, okay? Uh, and, 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 and it says, and it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tittle of the law to fail. Isn't it amazing? So we need to get back to the place of, 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 of the word. That's the only way we can come out of uh, confusion as believers to then become frontliners, nation changers, change agents, world changers, reformers, transformers, all the innovators, creators, pioneers, you know, that call to build prototypes, okay? So when things have fallen apart, we have to begin to build new things that can replace what's fallen apart. That's what I'm saying. And we cannot do that if our cognition is not right or our cognitive skills are not, you know, um, healed and structured and operating and tested and tried are not ones that can bring a conviction, which is the only thing that brings change. So Jesus made them understand in Luke chapter 17, verse 21, he made them understand that the kingdom of God is inside of them. Because the Bible says now, when he was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, I see here, or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Says, you know, this is not something that is external. It's in the future, it's in the present, it's in the past. It's within, you know, and it is without. But the believer carries it in fullness. So let me then go with all of this uh, foundation laying. Let me go to uh, Second Chronicles you know, 2020. So here's Jehoshaphat Judah, and we know what Judah represents, praise, and let's just say joy, joy, and joyful rejoicing. So here's um, um, Judah and his nation, trauma coming to this nation from three wicked, three wicked, three strong, let me say the strong because your enemies are wicked, three strong nations coming against this leader and his people, creating crisis. And the Bible tells us in verse three that Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. I love it. So we're looking at a picture of reality. So Jehoshaphat, one of the, uh, oh, a primary, a primary way to deal key or, or, or principle or whatever you call it, an unlocking, an unlocking thing. So it's a principle, it's a key. You know, to unlock a national crisis is to come face to face with the reality of the enemy that you're dealing with. Because, you know, the Lord said to me once, you cannot defeat an enemy you cannot identify. You cannot defeat an, an enemy you can't identify because you'll be like, you know, when you start to swim and you're learning breaststrokes, you're all over the place like it may be. So you're going to be all over the place, you know, because you have not structured your thinking. You have not come to terms with your reality. And of course, you don't have your truth. So you're going to be, you know, everywhere. And so this is the decade, remember, is a decade of the mouth. 
okay? And out of the abundance of our understanding, our mouth has to declare. So we're not called to speak out of, you know, um, ignorance. In fact, I'm going to take you to one of my favorite scriptures. Please bear with me. And I'm rounding up here. Um, oh, my God, I think I have a minute. Just bear with me so we can round this up very tidily. You know, so 1 Corinthians chapter 2, um, verse 11. I want to just do this very quickly. Verse 11 says, um, for what man knows the things of him of man except the spirit of the man which is in him, even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So this Paul is writing here to the saints in Corinth. He says, who knows what you're thinking now? I can see your names. I'm not going to call you out. But who knows what you're thinking now about you? I don't know what you're thinking. Okay, so no prophet knows what you're thinking. No apostle knows what you're thinking. No teacher, no prophet, no, unless the Lord gives them. The spirit of God works in word of knowledge, which is the supernatural ability to know what only God and you know. No, that is word of knowledge. That's not prophecy. Although many have built ministries on word of knowledge and the ignorant have followed that and, and call them prophets, but not knowing that they are operating the gift of the spirit, Holy Spirit given gift of word of the manifestation, really manifestation of the word of knowledge, which every believer has, you know, resident in them and can be activated to operate. So that's free lesson, all right? So you just might be chasing after what you already have. What you need to do is to submit yourself to the authority that God sent you to so that you are equipped for the work of the ministry. Word of knowledge is what helps you in the marketplace to move the kingdom of God, all right? So here, verse 11, Paul is saying, who knows what you're thinking about yourself? He said, likewise, only the Holy Spirit knows what the God is thinking. And here is the scripture, the verse that I love so much. It says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Paul says, you don't want to be shortchanged. You don't want to pay for what is free, what is yours. But you could be there if you don't give time to study. This is what I've been challenging us. He said, the things that have been freely given to us by God. It is freely given to us by God that we understand seasons and times that we're living in that we understand what he's doing at any given time, that we can partner and participate, not as back seat persons, but as frontliners, because it is our father's estate. We are sons. We have to move in inheritance mindset. Otherwise, if you feel inferior, you cannot possess a land as a slave, as an orphan. It is impossible. So this is what we're talking about. So we need the spirit of God to help us understand what's been given freely to us. I love it also when Paul says to the, um, to the saints in Rome, he said, I long to see you that I, I may impart to you some spiritual gifts so that you may be established. This is a time of establishing. So I bring you back to Second Chronicles 20. 20. So these uh, three nations come against, you know, um, Judah. So threefold called enemy to you know, attack your joy, to attack. So all over the world, this is happening. There's so much confusion, there's so much conflict. And so the, the king goes to the father. So this is a model of um, the kind of, uh, 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 the, or oh, this is the kind of model we want to be following. We want to be looking for servant leaders. We want to be looking for leaders that are vulnerable. Right now, the world is at a place where, you know, it's like all men have sinned and come short of his glory. They say flattening. So every nation is speaking the same language. Every nation is talking about COVID. Every nation is talking about vaccines. The same argument, the same conversations are going on everywhere, whether it be the economy, whether it be the, uh, 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 how to manage the digital age. It's just a good place for the sons of God to, to come out and say, look, we have the solution. We have what it takes. You know, not asking, give us a chance, but to, you know, ag not aggressively in the way, but violently. The, you know, we're told that since the days of John the Baptist until now, that the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. We are, we, the, you know, Jesus taught us that the least person in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist, who was the greatest prophet born by man. So you're listening to me, you are greater than John the Baptist. This is the 
kingdom of God suffers violence. And here he's talking about consistency, commitment, you know, attributes that are necessary for you to be able to be victorious in what God's called to you. So this is what Jesus taught us. So here we are. So the man of God goes and what does he do? You know, he, 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 he approaches the father, the intimate relation he had with Yahweh. So what does that mean to you? You have been given, you know, what it takes to approach, you know, the throne of grace, Hebrews 4, 16, by because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And Romans 5 tells you, there is now no condemnation for you. You need not be ashamed. Jesus Christ was of no reputation. You need to not be of reputation. What you need to do is to understand your status. You need to understand who you are, your identity, and what you are being called to do. You are a son of the living God. Where things are at right now in the world, you cannot come as a child. We children of God, you cannot come as what? You have to come first of all as a son, your mentality right now and the mental state by which you have to fulfill purpose is that of a son. Galatians 4, 1 already tells you that an heir while still a child is no worse than a slave, even though he's master of all. So you have to come in the sonship mentality. You have to give time to meditate on what it is to be a son. And you don't have to look far. Romans 8, 14 tells you that as many as are led by his spirit, these are the sons of God. So this calls you to begin to repair, repair any broken relationship with the Holy Spirit. This calls you to begin to understand who you are as the holding place of the Holy Spirit, as the habitation of the Holy Spirit. And that should take you immediately to Galatians 5, and you begin to look at the, the, the works of the flesh, and you offer yourself to that same Holy Spirit to develop the fruit of the Spirit in you. So the character and image of Christ is being formed in you, remember? And that's where you link to the fivefold, remember I said? Seven leaders, fivefold, Ephesians chapter four, verse 10. Jesus said, look, these are my attributes and I'm divesting them into man. And that's Ephesians 4, 11. The uh, uh, apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the evangelist, the pastor. And these are not, you know, kilama sakata, control gifts. These are not control you know, titles. These are the government of God. These are servant leaders. These are attributes of Christ placed in man. And the inspired way that they teach and function should make every one of us know who is who because we've studied and we can understand when an apostle is speaking that an apostle is, is being inspired to teach in such a way that our mind, you see, is being things are coming into place, okay? So these um, fivefold equipers do not introduce destiny to you. They speak into what you are already carrying and the way that the messages come then form just like creator God created us in image and likeness forms you know, our minds in such a way and understanding that we are able to take that information. So after tonight, you should be able, if nothing at all, come to the um, understanding that you are a son. That's the identity you have to come out with right now. You have to understand the importance of instructions. So you'll, you become somebody that begins to uh, um, um, take your relationship with the Holy Spirit. In, I'm, I'm now going to round off very, very quickly two minutes. You begin to take your relationship with the Holy Spirit, very important because instruction is coming from the Holy Spirit. I hope I did not you know, leave any incomplete statement over there. I hope not. Spirit of God, help me. I don't think I did. Right, so let's come over here. I, I, I have given you the picture of the house of God, of the government of God, of the five you know, um, attributes, okay, five functions that have been given to the house of God to build it. You and I are the house of God. So we are built up through inspired teaching and we are sent out. So if we do not discover purpose, then we can be in the wrong class in that house of God. Jeremiah 315 make, is the picture of, you know, um, of the, the, the possibility of a teacher, or when I mean, when I say teacher, I mean 
whom you have been attached to, the house, the room that you have been attached to, okay, in the house of God, you know, to be brought up. If you look at what's happening all over the world, even in the technology, you see that apps are coming up that, you know, give access to rooms and all that. These are all pictures of my boss. These are all pictures of what God, you know, has designed, you know. So it's very interesting that at this time of the raising of the house of God, all right, Micah chapter four, Isaiah chapter two, that, you know, aptly apps are being developed and the focus is on creating rooms for more intimate conversation. Go and think about that. And I pray that you will give your mind to God for ingenuity and that you can be part of developing these apps that drive conversations and bring people exactly where God is at. It's very, very important. Please note that, okay? So these three nations come against Je Je Jehoshaphat. Um, so what, was, what are we saying here? Remember, I'll run through the seven and I'll um, try to then, um, this is very important actually. So um, instructions are very important and instructions must come, you know, from the spirit of God. Proverbs 4.13, I gave you that. And oh my God, Proverbs is full of, you know, um, scriptures on instructions. Number two, you have to know who's instructing you. So we know that creator father is instructing us through the Holy Spirit. So we have to rebuild our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 11.3 is a, a dear scripture uh, of mine that tells you, you know, that the things that you see were not created by the things that are seen. All right. So when there's lawlessness and brokenness and fragmentation and disenfranchisement and all these things, it is with the same word of God that we recreate, we rebuild. All right. So that's very, very important. And it's very interesting that the Greek word for framed in 11, uh, Hebrews 11, 3 is linked. Very, the understanding is very similar to the word equip in Ephesians 4. Um, 11. You know, one is catatismo, one is catatismo. So catatismo gives you the picture of a bone that is broken into pieces and how the surgeon comes and puts it together. So that's equipping. And then catatizo gives you the impression of something that is out of order and it's reset, it's realigned, it's reformed, it's all of that. So that's really amazing. So now that the world is the way it is, so we have to you know, come out in emergence and begin to bring apps, begin to bring concepts, teachings, write books, things that help you know, people's minds come into a stru structured thinking and that way, you know, lawlessness of the mind is dealt with and then we can advance the kingdom of God. So this man of God is a picture of him. No, I, I want to run the seven. So instructions, the instructor, and then number three, we have to also understand that we have, we've been, we're the believer, all right? So number three is a believer and the believer is being called right now to come into the over and above living, remember? And the over and above life is a supernatural life. So you're being called to come into that supernatural life, okay? And, 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 and living. So you're called to come into, and that supernatural life and living demands on you to be someone that subjects yourself to training, proper training, okay? And in proper ecosystems. So you become somebody that is fully equipped. You know, you're, you're being diligent to study the word of God, to, to be approved unto God. You're like the Berean Christians, you know, in, in Acts 17. You have heard what I'm saying now. You're going to go back and check the scriptures and see whether these things be so. And you develop your own framework for advancement because the kingdom of God is inside of you. People are waiting. Romans 8, 19 says the NS expectation of the creation is waiting for you. Okay. You're revealing, you're manifestation, you're coming at, you're saying, look, I'm here. No more um, gates, as we say, you know, in my ministry. But no, you need not worry. I'm here. I've got the solution. Okay. So they're waiting for you. And how do you know you're a son? You are led by the spirit of God. You come out of the lawless life of independence. I know it. I'm that. So you need to know the formation with which the Holy Spirit is moving now. Because we're in apostolic time, kingdom, you cannot be a one-man ranger. Spirit of God is building communities as it was at the beginning of the book of Acts. You have to locate your community and you have to come in there humbly. So this is a humble 
uh, king that we're dealing with, okay? So number four, I said, on, number four is sonship. Remember, instruction, instructor, believer, sonship, number four, that you have to now understand the status with which you go, that every season has a demand. So we're in a time of conflict crisis, okay? So it's a time of rebuilding waste places and all of that. But you cannot go and start to build when you don't have any ownership. You're either going to be, you know, a contractor that has been employed or you're the employee. So what are we saying? You are the employee. You are the steward. A steward is a household manager and you are the owner, co-owner of the earth because it belongs to your father. Psalm 24 verse one says that. And all its fullness, everything that has been placed in every nation to rebuild it is already there, okay? And it says, and the people that dwell in there. So you are the employer. You are the one to emerge. You're the one to bring the framework. You're the one to bring the blueprint. And you start, you're the one to select who works with you, okay? That has not known. And as you select those people that have not known him, that are not in your status, what does that mean? You are to then be a, the ethical value-centered uh, person that causes them to follow you into the household because the kingdom is about increase. God is interested. It's not his will that any should perish. And I spoke about Micah and Isaiah, their prophecy about the house of God. And so this is the time that you are being boosted given influence, given, you know, more responsibility because the prophecy of this age is that the people, people who don't know the Lord are going to recognize you and they're going to come to you. The favor of God is going to make them come to you for solutions and problems. It's already written. It can't be changed. Okay. That is uh, Micah chapter four, verses one to four, and the entire chapter, Isaiah two as well. So that is number four, sonship. So you have to understand that you can't fulfill purpose as a slave or orphan, Galatians for one, and that national crisis can be overcome if you understand that God is looking for deliverers of nations and you're one of those. It's, it's your destiny. And that if you don't understand that identity, you will be in another labor altogether. But what is needed right now are deliverers to nations, all right? So number three is military. I said, you have to develop a military, military mindset, mentality, posture, positioning. So Ephesians 3.10, you know, is a great scripture for that. You have to understand that it is the church that is expected to make the manifold wisdom of God known to principalities and powers in heavenly places. So you're expected to understand spiritual warfare at this point in time. And in this, you know, particular decade, you are to understand spiritual warfare, not like like it was before. You have to understand that we are in atmospheric and climatic warfare. Uh, everything's moved to the digital. You cannot still be in the analog and you can't have your two feet on the ground and not know how to fly. The sons of disobedience that is talked about by Paul in Ephesus, you know, remember the Greek mindset, the Greek, you know, operated by, you know, the mind, all right? So to overcome you know, the Greek mindset, you have to take your place in creation far and above. And Ephesians chapter two tells you that far and above principalities, powers, dominion, and mind. Okay. So we are called to humble the enemy by coming in, uh, in, a, in greater wisdom, wisdom of God hidden in mystery. In fact, I taught on a class, you know, recently, and I don't know, just taught by revelation, but somebody, an expert thought I, I taught by expert knowledge and um and that and that that is um uh, that led to a little bit of and you know whatever whatever so that's really uh, interesting to know that we're now ready to fulfill second um no one corinthians chapter two verses seven to nine the verses eight to nine the reason jesus was crucified they did not know that crucifying the king of glory many glory carriers are going to emerge to operate in higher wisdom so we are now in a time to operate in eyes have not seen ears have not heard no comprehend um heart of man comprehended you know uh what god can give to those who love him to manage, so sons to manage, all right? So God is boosting the brain, boosting the mind of the believer so that they can fulfill the great um, commission and uh, out there 
in the world system that you can bring wisdom that is higher. So military mindset, mentality is important. And number six, um, um, season, otherwise you'll be where God is not, okay? Like my spiritual father will say, so what time is it? So we're looking at Jehoshaphat as a pattern for these number seven, that you have to understand the time and you have to know what you ought to do, what your nation ought to do. So Jehoshaphat the king is a picture. So we got to be praying. Those that are praying, we're going to pray for seven leaders, those who are able to face reality. So the first thing he did was face the reality. He was scared and he did not deny that he was scared. And because he was scared, he was uh, driven to God. And because he was driven to God, number two, you know, he was able uh, to locate a principle that is everlasting, you know, that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. So he did that. Second Chronicles 7, 14, he was able to repent and he was able then, you know, to uh, uh, um, move the hand of God and a prophecy came. I think I'm going to stop at the stage because I can see Pastor John and then perhaps there will be a part two and I can then bring that. It's very been very important to lay foundation, you know, so that we, the seven keys are very important. So we understand really who we are. And I think the most exciting for me is that we know that in every pocket of time and in, in the progressive revelation of who we are and the work we have to do for the Lord, that we have to understand the identity that we work with. And the identity right now is that of sons. So if we move as sons, then we have an estate mentality. And then we're going to want to protect that which belongs to our father. Thank you very much for your time. And um, and I thank you for bearing uh, with this foundation laying. Please share because I have been well tutored by the Holy Spirit today. The teacher these days is the first student in the class. I love teaching. I love serving because I'm finding that I'm learning every time that I give myself to service. I want to thank Pastor John and um, all of NAC for inviting me. It's the, maybe the second or third time I have been invited on platform this year 2021 that's another shift that's come and he says i am the apostle and of that can you see that jesus is the apostle and all that he says i am this is my third invitation i hope i get a fourth one and we can round this off uh, next next time god bless you thank you apostle great honor to have you on the ship after a long while today. We are really grateful, but immediately, Apostle, I want to negotiate to say that we would love to have you come Monday again on this very team. If you will oblige us, we'll be very, very grateful. Apostle, is it possible we'll have you on Monday so that... Um, we will unpack, I believe, everybody, that there, there, there is a request quite later, I'm perceiving in my spirit, that um, I've seen messages on the Facebook and reactions. So we will um, inform everyone, by the grace of God, if we're going to have a apostle on Monday. So you look out for, okay, apostle? Thank you, Pastor John. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be an honor. At least we've done the foundation. It's very, very important, you know, that uh, we understand that we're now right in the real world and that we are armed um, to deal with the real world. So we can, you know, not spend all our time planning how we're going to escape to heaven, but that we can also spend time of how we're going to be relevant to get the work done on this real earth where we've been called to make impact and to bring change. So it'll be an honor to um, do that on Monday. Thank you, Pastor Chair. Thank you, Apostle. We are very grateful. We appreciate you, Apostle. Um, I, I want to believe the technical team will, um, maybe tomorrow or next, load this up immediately on the YouTube. And you can find it on the Facebook. So you go back and um, um, our grandfather, Apostle's father, uh, apostle says that um, you listened like seven and more than seven times to actually comprehend uh, a message. So you go listen over and over and share with others. And by next week, 
we will still have Apostle on Monday on the shift. We are really grateful to have you. We thank you and bless you all for sharing and inviting all of us to join us on, um, on the shift tonight. At this time, I want to invite Moses Adelani to give us other announcements. Please hold on. It will definitely benefit you. Mr. Moses. Thank you very much, Pastor John. Uh, thank you so much, Apostle, for tonight's word. It came at the right time. It's God's word for this season. And we're deeply honored to have had you mentor, teach us tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, this is to um, inform us. Um, as usual, every Mondays, um, the Neymar Apostolic Resource Center organizes the shift, which is our flagship teaching expression, um, 6 p.m. West African time. It's an opportunity for us to go through the word of God. The accurate exegesis of scripture establishes the believer, establishes the saints, and it's important that we avail ourselves. On Thursdays, we have the extravagant worship which is our flagship worship expression here at the Neymar Apostolic Resource Center. It's an opportunity to pour ourselves and give our um, worship offerings to release our incense of worship to God at, this, at, at 6 p.m. West African time. So um, 6 p.m., please join us this Thursday as we worship together. Praise the Lord. Um, every time at 11, every day of the week at 11 p.m. West African time, we have got the altar of fire, which is a more... Uh, this, which is our prayer altar here at the name of Apostolic Resource Center. And we engage God's word and pray together as a family. You could join us on, uh, on a, at, at any time you're free and by 11 p.m. God's blessings. We trust that you were blessed tonight and we would love to see you on Thursday at the Extravagant Worship. And on um, Monday again at the night edition of Shift with Apostle Lobby Park Sorry. SOGP, the School of Government and Politics, an expression of the Neymar Apostolic Resource Center, has, uh, has been on um, an eight weekends course, Values Orientation National Development course, which is more like the basic and entry level course of the School of Government and Politics. We've exhausted two modules. Um, we, are go we, we, will be, we will be exhausting the third module this Saturday and other modules every Saturday at 10 a.m. West African time. You could also be part of that as we look into very critical issues, crucial issues of national importance, and learn from very resourceful facilitators. We trust you are blessed tonight, and we would love to see you again by next week, Monday. And so we say, surely God's goodness and mercies shall follow you all the days of your life, and you will abide in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much, and good night. <laughs>